Hello, I'm Mrs. Murdoch, and today I'm going to talk about osmosis and how water moves, right? So this is really a presentation about water movement and in different conditions. Conditions. Okay. So osmosis, first of all, let's just define that is the diffusion of water. The diffusion of water molecules from where the water is high concentration to where it is low. Right. And usually it's going across some sort of a membrane either moving out of a cell or into a cell, right? I'm going to say usually, in fact, in every situation you guys will look at in AP Biology, it's going to be always. Usually across a cell membrane. Okay. All right. So in each situation that I'm going to describe to you here, there's not just one solution in the situation, there are two solutions. One on one side of the membrane and one on the other. And it's the difference in those solutions in terms of their solute concentration that's going to drive whether water moves or not. So I'm gonna draw three beakers. I'm gonna to try to make them roughly the same size and shape. I'm gonna draw out three different situations that will cause osmosis to occur. Right. A bit of a wonky one on that last one. Oh, well. Three beakers, trust me. Okay. In each beaker, there is water. Water is the solvent. And in each beaker, let's say that there is a giant human red blood cell that's so big we can just see it floating there, even though I know this is unrealistic, just to make the point of the two solutions that are in each beaker. So in every single beaker, there is a solution inside the cell, in the cytosol of the cell, where there might be solutes dissolved, and a solution outside that the cell is bathing in, and a membrane in between those two solutions, okay? So the first solution I'm going to draw uh, I'm going to put lots of salt ions around the cell. I'm going to put a lot of salt ions out here. So it's a concentrated solution outside this cell. Okay. Let's say it's 0 0.8 molar salt um, outside here. And then inside the cell, let's say that it's a lot less. Maybe it's 0 0.3 molar inside, okay? And we're talking about the salt concentration. So in the middle cell, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to put the red blood cell still has a 0 0.3 molar salt concentration in here. Right? And outside, exactly the same concentration in the outer solution. 0.3 molar outside as well. Okay. In this third situation, we still have 0.3 molar salt inside the cell, and we have zero molar outside. So there's no salt in the water outside at all. So we've got some dots inside the cell, but nothing outside. Okay. So in these situations, I'm going to be defining the outer solution with a term. The one that the cell is bathing in is the one that I'm giving a name. So this solution that has a higher concentration of solutes than the cell it's compared to is called a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solutions have more solutes in them than the solution they're being compared to. has more solutes than 
than the red blood cell in this case. Okay, the second beaker, since the sol solute concentration is the same, we say that that is isotonic. Maybe you remember that word, iso meaning same. So this is an isotonic solution to the red blood cell. It is isotonic to the cell. Has the same concentration. of solutes as the RBC. I'll use that acronym. Okay. Finally, the last one, since it has less solutes than the red blood cell, that is called a hypo, hypotonic solution. Has less or lower concentration of solutes than the red blood cell. Okay. All right. So now, consequences. Which way is the water going to flow in the first beaker? Is it going to go into the cell or out of the cell more? What do you think? Into Most of you are saying into the cell, and I understand why you say that, because you're thinking about the solute flow rather than the water flow. From the point of view of the water, because the salt in these situations is not going to flow quickly. Most cells don't let salt across their membranes. But water, um, there's aquaporins aplenty in those membranes. So the water is going to flow. The salt is not going to flow. The water is actually going to flow out. Because from the water's point of view, it's going from a place where it's more concentrated to where it's less concentrated. Can you see that? You kind of have to think a little backwards. So in this, inside the cell, there's a higher concentration of water because there's a lower concentration of salt. And that's still following our laws of diffusion, isn't it? So water, from the water's point of view, the water will move out of the cell because then all of the, all of the dots out here will get spread further apart, weren't they? So you are diluting the outer, probably not very much because it's just one little cell, but you're diluting this hypertonic solution and attempting to equalize the concentration of solutes on both sides of that membrane. That's why the water will move out. That's also why when you go to swim, swim in the ocean, don't you feel dehydrated coming out? Ah, yeah. Swimming in the ocean will dry you out because the ocean's very salty. And the mucous membranes that are thin, lining the inside of your mouth and nose and places like that and around your eyes, are going are gonna to probably let a bit of your water out of you. And you're going to come out feeling, ugh, dried out, right? And that's what the salt water will do. Okay, same for a red blood cell. So the water will flow mostly out. What about the isotonic solution? Remember the dynamic equilibrium? Yes, yeah, so overall, no change, right? But they, it, there will be, remember this symbol from freshman year? <laughs> An equal passage, but no of overall change. All right, so let me just finish this a little bit. Okay, so here we know that the water, water moves out. And the cell will often shrink, which is not good for cells. Here, uh, we have something called dynamic equilibrium. Water um, moves both ways, but no overall change, right? And for most cells, that's, a, that's the ideal environment. Okay, finally, in the last one, now which way is the water going to move? Yes, now you understand, right? Because the concentration of the water outside is higher than the concentration of the water inside the cell. So it's following um, diffusion rules. So water moves in, and the cell uh, will swell. And in the case of if it's just pure water, the cell will probably burst in this situation. A red blood cell certainly can. That's called lice. 
which is another scientific term of saying it will burst. Right? Okay. So here you have these three, they're called the, the three tonicities. Hypertonic, when a solution has a higher concentration of solutes than the one it's compared to. Isotonic, which means that the solutions are the same on both sides of the membrane. And hypotonic, which means the solution you're talking about has a lower concentration of solutes than the one on the other side of the membrane. And these, these words um, are comparison words. You can't use the words at all unless there's another member, another solution on another side of the membrane to compare it to, right? So we say that this outer solution is hypertonic. But what that means is in this situation, this inside solution in here is hypotonic, right? And water will always flow from hypotonic to hypertonic solutions. That's also true. You can say that. So in these, in these three beakers, I'm trying to keep it the same where I'm describing the outside solution. But a question, question could just as well say, you know, the cytoplasm of a cell is hypertonic to his environment. And then you would have to figure out, you know, um, ideally by drawing a picture like this. <laughs> oh, what did Mrs. Murdoch say about concentrations and water flow? And just keep thinking of it from the point of view of the water. Where is the water higher in concentration? And then where will it move as a result? Right? Okay. Water will always tend to move towards where there's more solutes to try to dilute that area. That's another easy way to remember. Okay. Okay, so that's the three tonicities, and that's the consequences on water, uh, water flow and cell shape. Uh, also remember that if these were plant cells, the story would be slightly different. Um, but I'll tell that maybe on another day. All right, thank you for listening.